Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Tuesday the 12th of April 2022 and we're going to start off today's video with this from newsatden.co.uk and it says bulk of Mill squad have experience of pressure of top 6 fight but no guarantee of success uh, so this is more stuff from Gary Rowe it looks like uh, Gary Rowe knows experience could be key in running especially in guiding younger players who haven't been in this position before a number of the current squad have successfully dealt with the pressure of a top six challenge to reach the playoffs. Sean Hutchinson, Jay Cooper and Jed Weiss were in the squad that won the League One playoff final in 2017. There is playoff experience throughout the squad, either in semi-finals and finals, including Bart Beer, Kelsey with Ipswich, George Long with Sheffield United, Danny Ballard with Blackpool, Scott Malone with Fulham and Derby, Mason Bennett and George Evans with Derby, Murray and Wallace with Scumville, Alex Pearce with Reading, Ben Kofobi with Huddersfield Town and Ryan Leonard with South End. Um, that's a lot of playoffs. Uh, um, okay. Uh, Mill are still in the race for the top six, though are considered outsiders. Around knows these previous experience of no guarantees. The side can take a couple of extra steps forward after eighth place finishes in 2017, 18 and 19, 20. But he explained how those players can influence the squad. There's as much importance in what the players do on the pitch as what they do every day, Rao said. It's the energy to drive the other players every day to make sure that from a player's perspective the standards are high to make sure we recognise that we're good at how and we win games. I think it's those senior players have stepped up, the likes of Jeddy stepped up as a leader in the group. Since he's come back from injury, it's been tangible how much influence he's had on and off the pitch amongst others. They've got to keep doing that. Younger players always look to the senior players as well as the management team. We drive it, the senior planet players drive it. And that's what our club and team's about. So yes, it's vitally important, but I don't necessarily think the experience of being in there helps make it any easier, but you know what it looks like and you know what it feels like. And that can help guide some of the other players that haven't been in that position. Indeed, indeed. And um, yeah, so I was thinking about um, this weekend coming up, Easter weekend, we've got a match on Good Friday and we've got a match on Monday. Um, on that Monday game against Hull, I mean, maybe Alex Pierce could make a start, something like that, you know, because you need some fresh legs and uh, a, fr a fresh head. Um, if now, would that be something that you could do? Probably, uh, but I don't know if Garrett would do that. Um, we do need, um, we can't make the same mistake that we made going from the Luton game to the Swansea game, where he kept the same team, didn't work. It really didn't, it kind of messed us up. And you see, uh, from the Swansea game to the Barnsley game, he made two changes, and that was that did help a lot. So you can imagine going from the Friday to a Monday, what that's going to do to us. But um, well, if they're in a the squad, do you think they're good enough? So make use of them. Um, before we move on, I just wanted to bring you this. So, um, News at Den has put this banner at the bottom of the screen. Um, they're asking for your support. Um, they're the only independent paid for local newspaper in London. And it's just one of a handful in the whole country. Um, they're asking for donations. If you could um, come to this page, find this page. It's newsatden.co.uk and uh, support News at Den. Um, click on that. It's um, part of the Suffolk News. If you didn't know that, it's, it's owned and operated by Suffolk News. Um, if you buy us at the paper copy of Suffolk News and the local news agents um, you're helping them um, there used to be a thing where you could subscribe uh, by credit card and they would mail it to you but I think they stopped doing that because when my subscription ran out I, try, I tried looking to renew it and uh, it doesn't seem to be around anymore it's all online now which I don't know about you but flicking through a newspaper is a lot different in person than it is online I'm not an online person really which is weird because I'm talking to you online and I'm showing you these online stories, but reading a paper, being able to just flick instantly from one page to the other and back again, that's that's what reading is to me. Um reading online is not is not reading, it's you're online, it's something else, you know. Um but here you go, support the news at den, um because there may be a time when they stop publishing the actual paper and it might just be a website. Um, so there you go. If you have a few square spare quid or you have a big win on the uh, bookies, maybe consider donating to uh, 
the news at Liverpool, their excellent coverage of Mill Football Club. Um, so moving on now to this from a Mill Football Club, uh, official club website, millfc.co.uk. Uh, bid on Mill's match-worn shirts from Barnsley win available now. Uh, match-worn shirts from Mill Skybet Championship win over Barnsley are available to bid on now. The Lions announced a three-year partnership with match-worn shirt last week and supporters can now own a piece of history from the 4-1 success over the Tykes. Danny McMahon's shirt is sure to be hot property whilst tops from goal scores all over Burke and Benicophobia are also up for grabs. To view the shirts and to bid, click here. And the auction closes at 3pm on Saturday the 16th of April. So this Saturday, so they're only giving you a wait week to do this. So uh, so here we go, this is the page. That's so far, total bids are up to £4,776. And surprisingly, you would think Danny McMahon's shirt was the highest. This is his 50th appearance for Mill. It's uh, he's got his first goal, got his second goal as well. Um, but no, it's not. As we scroll down, you'll see the actual highest number is Bart Piekowski, 513 pounds, which is uh, surprising for me. I don't know why that is. Uh, the next one is Jed Wallace, obviously, um, being a superstar that Jed Wallace is. Um, Tony McNamara's is up there, it's 454. Um, but there you go. Bart Biakowski, now I wonder is that... Well, I, I thought maybe it's because uh, if you go to the club shop now, you cannot, for the love of money, get yourself a goalkeeper shirt. And there are people who want goalkeeper shirts, and uh, maybe this is the only way you can get one. But then I'll scroll down, you know, or you can get the George Long one. For 117 now maybe you don't want if you're playing you don't want one that says long one on the back you want one that says Bart uh, Biakowski 33 on the back especially if, if you're going to be playing in it but I don't know um but it's all very weird um so yeah for some reason you can't get goalkeeper shirts uh, uh, from the mill shop anymore uh, I think there is a market for it. I've seen people asking, like, where are they? Can we, what, can we get some or what? And it's all very weird. Now, I don't know if it's too late to place an order. It probably is, but um, there's definitely a market there. And then I don't know why um, with the ordering, for, like, obviously there's not a massive market for goalkeeper shirts, but then there's a market there. So I don't know why Mill Football Club, maybe they don't do what a lot of... Um, like YouTubers and streamers do when they have merch drops. So they'll, they'll, now the normal practice is you make a product, you design a product, you put it on the website or in a shop and you sell it. And then people come in, they buy it, uh, certain sizes go out of stock and that's how you go. Normally at the end you, you've got, you haven't sold all of them, you've got a few lying around. But what a lot of these YouTubers are doing with their merchandise is um, so they take pre-orders, so they'll put the design up, they'll put the sizes up, and then they will take uh, orders for it. And they'll tell you, so you need to order by this date, and then from this date, uh, when it, they go off sale, we'll send it to you within four weeks, within six weeks or something like that. Now the reason behind that is they put the product up, take all the orders in, and then that is it because what they do is they do like limited edition merch with, for that as well so it's limited they take all the orders in they take those orders send them off to the manufacturers the suppliers telling them okay make this many so Mill would say to whoever it is um, Macron or whatever uh, make this many goalkeeper jerseys in small medium large extra large whatever and probably maybe a couple of extra on top Send it, send it to the club, and then the club can start sending it out to people who've already ordered it. And then you don't have any extras, you don't have any uh, uh, wasted, wasted. You don't end up with a stockroom full of stuff that you can't shift. And then, but also on the on the other end, you generally don't end up with a load of people who are missing out because they wanted to buy something and it's no longer available because you've under you've underestimated the demand. Because recently I, I was trying to go to uh, the website to get the blue shirt. I was think I didn't get it when it came out. I waited, and for love of money, I, I can't. Um, 
I can only get in 4XL and up. And uh, to be honest, yeah, I'm fat, but I'm not that fucking fat. I'm like, oh, well, I want 2XL, maybe 3XL, but 4XL? So yeah, I'm I'm missing out because I can't get it. And I'm looking on a Macron website. They don't sell it in to you in this country, um, because Mill have the rights to sell it in the UK apparently. So you can't get it in on Macron's website either. So I'm fucking kind of screwed. Um, so yeah, I'm wondering what 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 this is about. But why why is Bart's um shirt number uh number one seller? Can anyone tell me? I don't know. Um, but also, so with Danny McNamara as well, so obviously a big day for him, scoring his, uh, his, 50, his 50th appearance, scoring his first goal, scoring two goals, um, playing a blinder of a game, man of the match, whatever, all that jazz. This, this is the shirt that he was wearing, yeah? Like, they're not doing a switch on us, hopefully. He doesn't get to keep it, that shirt, like, he played... That that like occasion shirt for him doesn't get to keep it. That's kind of um um uh what would you say? Uh, kind of off, no. Um, now you could say, well, he's got he's got money. He's not poor. He could bid for it himself. I mean, five hundred quid, a lot of money for for some people, but for, I mean, for a fresh professional footballer, it's not that much. Um, so you, but here's the thing: it's it's an auction. So is it on Saturday, three PM when the game when when the auction's gonna be he has, he has to sit there and like hovering over his mouth pad, keep refreshing, refreshing, trying to make sure he gets his own shirt or well, how does that work? And or does he just put in an absolutely stupid bid open and it scares everyone off? But here's the thing. If I was one of his teammates and I wanted to play a massive prank on him and if, if I knew that he was bidding for his own shirt, I would get on there, wait for it. Like, if he put that massive bid in, I would wait until the last, last second. And I would overbid. I would win the auction. And I'll come into training, the next training session. And I'll talk to him about it. So, oh, what happened with that shirt you tried to buy? Did you end up getting it? You should see the look on his face. Oh, no, no, no. Someone outbid me. Putting a massive bid, but wasn't enough someone someone outbid me for that even and i'll just pull the shirt out from behind from behind me and throw it at him and say here you go son bon anniversaire there's your shirt doesn't i'm not sure where the money's going they don't they didn't say this one's for charity um but i think we all will use it for stuff like um community trust or something like that um so yeah um uh, that is happening as well so Yeah, um, kind of uh, weird that McNamara can't get to keep his shirt, but kind of weird that Bart Bukowski's shirt is the, the highest one so far. Now there is um, three and a half days left, so we'll see how it goes. The cheapest uh, outfield shirt is from Olawesi Babaji de Ojo. That was a match issued one, not a match worn. Um, if you want a match worn one, the cheapest one would be Ryan Leonard, it looks like. Um, so there you go. And the cheapest shirt overall is the George Long one. And the total now four four thousand seven hundred seventy six pounds, and there you have it. Um so moving on now to this from uh the Irish Independent. Here listed as independent.ie, um, but we've lost him. If we've lost him, and that's the way it is. Uh, Stephen Kenny prays for injured Matt Doherty. Now, um, what has this got to do with Millwall? It's got to do with Danny McNamara. Now, he had a blinding game uh, the other day, and uh, he did say in an interview that he gave pre match that uh, he spoke to the Nor uh, to the to the um, Stephen Kenny, the Irish boss, before the QPR game, I think it was about what he needed to do to get into the Irish team because he very much wants to do that. He was in the under-21s, so played quite well, and he's uh, kind of outgrown it now. He's overage, so you can't really... Well, you can't play for him anymore, so he's got 
he's got to make her into, into the actual first team. And um, he's not he's not really at that level, to be honest with you. I mean, if there was a Irish B team, like, well, how many players are in it? It's like a 28-man squad. So if there was an Irish B team, we'll definitely, so 28 plus 28, that'll be 56. So we'd definitely be in, in the top 56 for Ireland, but they don't do B teams anymore. But because uh, uh, I know mean, a lot of people saw it as an insult, um, I think Chris Sutton notoriously said so when he was picked for England B team and said, uh, no thanks. And uh, yeah, they've kind of faded away, don't do that anymore. Um, but here we have, um, so let's just read this, let's just read this. Uh, Stephen Kenny is planning for a pun punishing four game series of matches in June by promoting rookies from the championship like uncapped pair Danny McNamara and CJ Hamilton after injuries to key players but Kenny's not planning to turn his back on the old guard. So yeah, um, so they've got injuries, so injury will likely rule out James McLean, uh, Mac Doherty for the games, uh, and there are other players involved as well. Uh, let me scroll down to the bit where he said so uh, with Shane Duffy currently sidelined on by injury McLean potentially out for the season Andrew Omar Bamdeli gone until next term Dara O'Shea out of the picture at West Brom Kenny needs defensive options hence Mill fullback McNamara getting name checked as well as new recruit Blackpool's at Lunderbourne a Woodfed Braze, raised winger Hamilton uh, and then he doesn't mention mentions him again but uh so yeah, um, could be set to step up. And uh, now this tournament that that they're playing in, it's this league thing that they brought in in terms of trying to replace friendlies, giving making them more meaningful games. But it seems um, the kind of shine's gone off it now. We're in the third uh, round of this, and it doesn't really matter that much. It's supposed to help you move up the um, coefficients, like the Islander in Group B. And if they win the group, they get promoted to Group A. If they get bottom of the group, they, they get relegated to Group C. But to be honest with yeah, you, I think they should be pretty safe in this group. Um, so I think that's why he's thinking about um, playing players like Danny McNamara and stuff from the, from the Championship because, um, yeah, they, they should be able to at least finish in second or third in this group and not get relegated to this Group C. And if they can put the cherry on the top, they um, get promoted as well. Because Ukraine have to play all their game, home games at neutral venues. So obviously they're clearly the best team in, in in this league. But having to play at neutral venues might mess them up as well. Um, but I don't know who come up with the schedule because this is absolutely insane. So here we go. So look, June the 4th, 2022, Ireland are playing Ukraine in, in Dublin. Then on the 7th, three days later... They're going out to, to Armenia. Oh, pff, what? And then, not, and then, on the 11th, they've got to fly back to, to, they've got to go back to Dublin and play Scotland on the 11th. And then, three days after that, they've got to go somewhere. They don't even know where. Um, it's in two months' time. They still don't know where. They've got to go somewhere and play Ukraine. And where the hell is that going to be? Is it going to be in Germany? Is it going to be in London? Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, will it be in Switzerland, Portugal, Cyprus? Who the hell knows? They don't even know where they're going yet. But this schedule, whoever designed this, uh, they must be some kind of sadist or masochist. Playing in Ireland, travelling out to, to Armenia, travelling back to Ireland, then travelling somewhere else. And that that's their toughest game at the end against Ukraine. It's absolute madness that they're doing this, but yeah. And there's talk of a, like maybe a 32-man squad. So you would imagine uh, a lot of the... This, not only that, but this is uh, the 4th of June, not that far after the season finishes. I mean, if we do get to the playoff final, it's the week after the playoff final. And... Um, Daniel McMahon is in with a shout getting in the team probably because there's a lot of injuries and uh, probably a lot of players might um, be a bit tired and want to swerve it especially with a uh, crap like this maybe they'll, they'll go but they'll say well 
Um, I'll, I'll play in the games in Dublin, but I'm not. I'm not doing all this travelling. So he might have a, a squad of players for for the games in Dublin and a squad of players for games in Armenia. Now Armenia ain't all that. They're not. They're not dog shit, but they ain't all that. So yeah, how's that gonna go? Very, very weird. So there you go. Mac Mars in with a shout of getting uh, his first Irish cap as well. And what a t uh, time for him it will be. Uh, scoring two goals from your wall and uh, getting in the Irish team. That would be good. So we'll see how that, that develops um, at the moment. You, and you can see here, so these are the teams where they were ranked. Um, 17, so Ukraine are the, were ranked as the best team in this whole um, Group B division. Um, and then you get one team from each pot. So then they got Scotland and then you got Ireland who were 28th. And then you got Armenia who were 32. So Ireland are in a group with the best team at that, le that level, Ukraine, and the worst team at that level, Armenia. So they should kind of be all right in terms of not getting relegated. I mean, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're going to move now. Nearly done. Uh, the loan watch is up. There's no shrinking day by day. The number of players out still on loan is shrinking, but we do have this. And the lone players who played this weekend both played in the same game. So this is from MillWFC.co.uk. A lot of views for this, 1,058 views. Uh, Isaac Loffey found himself up against Dan Moss on Saturday afternoon as Sutton United were 1-0 winners over Leighton Orient in Sky Bear League 2. After appearing at Wembley Stadium the week before, Loffey played the full game as Joe Kizzy's goal was enough to keep the Gander Green Lane outfit in touch with the playoff spots in the fourth tier. Moss, meanwhile, played 75 minutes of the fixture whilst Addis Mitchell is nearing a return to action for the U's. So that last line there is interesting because it's so it's speculating. They haven't played for a while and you think, well, the new manager's come in. Um, they, did they get dropped or what's happening there? But it seems they're injured, um, which is um, nice, to, nice to fucking um, finally uh, figure that out. Um, yeah. But it uh, seems they're coming back from injury, so good, good, good. Um, let's hope they can, um, yeah, play a few games and uh, come back next season strong and raring to go. So we're going to move on now to uh, this story now. Uh, Young Lions enjoy Mills Junior Takeover Day. So Saturday jobs for the little ones. So yeah, if you were at the game this uh, weekend, you may have noticed a unusual voice on the uh, Tannoy system uh, now doing the announcing. And uh, yeah, they let they did. I think this is they've been doing this for a while. And uh, yeah, they let them um, kids come in and uh, take over the roles of match day roles. So Mills' latest junior takeover they proved to be a roaring success on Saturday. Four junior lions took on match day roles at the Den Ahead. Uh, and during the first half of Mill's 4-1 Skybet Championship win over Barnsley, Harold Buttle became the junior crowns person for the day, whilst Jacob Waghorn and Harry Morgan joined the Lions media team as a junior reporter and a junior videographer, respectively. Finally, Jake Pugh was a big part of history as the junior PA, calling Danny McNamara's first ever Mill goal. Fantastic. Um, then they have the pictures from the day. So there you go. Child labour, exploitation. I'm joking. Um, there you go. Uh, well, that's that's where they keep the stretchers, is it? On in the tunnel. Interesting. Um, yeah, there you go. Still wearing a poppy, or is that from last year? Or is, he, is he getting in early for this year? Um, there you go on the laptop. What's he looking at? Hopefully, is he playing Fortnite? Maybe. Um, there you go with the camera, getting some footage. Uh, I think the the one on the right is not a junior. I <laughs> think that's the actual. Um, college age guy running the video. Uh, there you go again. Wow, look at that thing in front of there, all the buttons on that. If I, at the age I'm at now, if I was put in front of that and told to, uh, I had to do something with it, it would be a bit scary for me. Oh, and there you go. And there you go. Uh, the one on the left is the junior line, yeah. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you. 
one more thing that I wanted to share with you, which I forgot to pull up, and I think I'll get it on the Twitter, is the open morning tomorrow is not on uh, for a very sad reason, well, um, sad and respectful reason, the open morning for Wednesday tomorrow, if I can uh, just scroll down and sort it out, here we go, um, the open morning, so please note that tomorrow's open morning will not take place, uh, this is due to members of Millwall staff attending the funeral, Paul Jiggins, Paul's funeral is tomorrow morning and uh, that means the open morning at the den is cancelled, so if you're planning on going to that, please don't. And on that sad note, we will end the video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.